2023, and I believe the second one is July 2024. But I'm I'm really stoked. The trailer looks great. I've watched it like half a dozen times already. <laughs> Have to check it out. <laughs> we gotta sit down and watch some Mission Impossible movies, dude. That'd be fun. That would be fun. Um, God, sp- speaking, we're, we're gonna watch, we're gonna watch Fallout one of these <laughs> days because it rules. Speaking of crews, uh, are you interested? Are you gonna check out Top Gun at all, Maverick? Oh hell yeah, I'm gonna check out Top Gun. I I, I can't speak on how great the actual movie is gonna be. But, like, the flying scenes in IMAX are going to kick ass. Yeah, the dogfights. Yeah, so I'm, I'm excited for that. I've seen, I've seen a, a clip of it already with, with, like, the full IMAX, and it's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I have a couple friends that went to some early screening here on one of the, I think it was one of the bases, and, he, and, and Tom actually showed up for them and stuff. So Yeah. It was crazy, but they said that the movie was really good and it and it was um, very like authentic to the first one. Well, that's cool. I know that they sh- they had showed it at Show West at the end of April. Mm-hmm. I believe at the end of April, and it, it got it got a lot of critical acclaim. But then uh, I was hearing that critics at Show West want to be invited back, so of course they're going to kiss its ass. Oh, okay. So there was some worry that, yeah, the movie's not going to be that good. These people are just, you know, looking for a a chance to be invited back. But everything I've heard beyond that has said, yeah, the movie's really good. And uh, especially like all the the aerial fight scenes are going to be awesome. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Cool. Uh, does that wrap your ears up then? Uh, yes, that wraps up my news. Cool. All right, so we already talked about Ray Liotta. I had one, and I think you're going to really appreciate this. So NECA has been having reveals of their Comic-Con 2022 exclusive figures and sets since last week. And lo and behold, they've constructed a beautiful 7-inch replica figure inspired by the art of Carpenter's The Thing, celebrating 40 years of body horror. Um... This is pretty exciting stuff, man. What's the figure? Is it, it the... Like the 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 parka the parka figure from the on the on the the basically the main cover art? Oh, cool! But okay. it's like yeah, the, but they re envisioned it as a you know as an action figure, and it has you know it doesn't have a face; it has an LED installed, so you can actually turn it on and it beams the light. Oh, awesome! Yeah, it's pretty wild, man. <laughs> Awesome. Do you know what it's it's gonna sell for? No, but um, based on what their figures usually go for, I would say it's probably ranging at anywhere between thirty five to fifty. So not not too bad. Um, it's coming with a bunch of different kind of heads and and even like the shard, so you can set it up like a you know like the actual image on the poster. Cool. So. You know, it's going to have a a super nice, like, window box for display and stuff. Um, They haven't released, like, you know, how we're going to be able to get it. Like, if you have to actually go to Comic-Con or they're going to release a few online, you know. But but I'll keep everybody informed as I know more on this as well. Cool, cool. I know know we're getting close. Is Comic-Con going to happen in person this year? Is that definite? Uh, Yes, that's definite. Okay. Well, uh, if anyone is going, then please be safe. Not a bad idea to wear a mask, seeing how you're going to be around so many people. Yeah, a lot of people. <laughs> and, you know, and you and I have both been inside on the floor, and it gets very crowded, especially in some sections. So, oh, yeah. You know, a mask is a, is a good idea, if you ask me. Yeah, I would say so. You know, even definitely there, you know, with the, you got so many people coming from out of town. So yeah, just be safe. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. I, I can't wait to, to see that. After I'll have to look up images online or, um, if you, if you have it, you know, please forward it to me. Yeah. Yeah. I'll send it to you for sure. I knew you would appreciate that because it's so, it was so random, but 
<laughs> welcomed at the same time. And because of uh, the director that we're talking about tonight. So I had to shout it out. Absolutely. Also, I already said this last week, but I think Fathom Events is having uh, two nights. I don't know. I think it might be in June. Two nights uh, they're bringing back the thing uh, on the big screen. Oof. Probably going to try to get get a screening of that. I love that. I love that movie, and I've seen it on the big screen a handful of times, and it's, it's pretty rad. I don't. Th- I don't think I've seen it yet on the big screen, so I might have to try. Oh, to, yeah. oh dude, yeah, I got to do it. <laughs> got to figure out when it is. Maybe we. Maybe we can cruise together. Yeah, definitely. And then uh, my last bit of news, and I don't think either one of us really care about this, but I thought it was hilarious because it's like this franchise has become so much of a joke that it's almost meta. Like they're just fucking with everyone. Uh, Fast X has announced that Rita Moreno will join the film's growing roster of stars as Dom's grandmother. <laughs> I mean, that's good for Rita Moreno. She's awesome. She's. Uh, I think they said she's like, like ninety two or something. Now. Yeah, she's 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 up there in age, but she still looks really good. Yeah, and like not that not that old. Yeah, she she doesn't she doesn't look as old as as she is, but I just. I caught pieces and parts of, of West Side Story, the Spielberg version, the other night. Yeah, I didn't. I wasn't going to waste three hours <laughs> with all of it, but I was catching pieces and parts as I was doing something else. And she's in it, and uh, was very good in in the couple of scenes I had seen her in. Awesome. So I mean, good for her, but yeah, Get- Fast and Furious is such a fucking joke. <laughs> getting the getting that check, dude. They have what is it? Uh, Brie Larson, Jason Momoa, and now Rita. In this <laughs> is Brie Larson going to be like Dom's sister that was never mentioned through nine other movies, but like pops up all of a sudden? Yeah, the way that fucking Cena, yeah, is in this in this latest <laughs> one, and they're doing all of this. Uh, I seen clips from that one that's out where they go to space, and they do all of this weird like prequel stuff of Dom like young, and and then. You know, like how they try to explain how he was, you know, how he separated from his brother, and it just kind yeah, of yeah. They they have to retcon the entire story to to make <laughs> this this one plot point work. <laughs> I'm just saying. It, it's 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 like how the 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 one guy dies in Tokyo Drift, and then they bring him back for all the other movies, and that's awesome. I'm glad he's getting work because he's a good actor. But it's like they had to twist everything into a pretzel to try to explain like how he's alive and how he how he is in all these other movies and the timeline is so fucked up it's yeah. it's like ridiculous <laughs> but whatever man lean into it at this point in time just lean into the ridiculousness I guess yeah and now it's time for the weekly recommendations uh, well, normally I have two. I kind of got three, but I do want to shout it out. Uh, go check out Men if you haven't seen it. You saw it? Yeah, I watched it because I had some downtime between one appointment and the next. Nice. So I, I, I went in. It's it's kind of a short movie anyway, so the timing really worked out. But uh, I really dug it. It's typical like A24, like really creepy horror. Okay. Uh, there's one scene in it that's so fucking creepy. Alex Garland is great at making a scene or two in each of his films, like, just really disturbing. Yeah. And this this has plenty of disturbing shit, but there's a scene early on where Jesse Buckley is in a tunnel that's really creepy. <laughs> and Jesse Buckley's great in it. I just want to shout her out. But, uh, I liked it. It might not be for everyone, but uh, it's really good. There's some really creepy body horror stuff in it. Nice. So I am I am a fan of his of his films. Me too. But I I've been hearing like mixed things. Like uh, so, uh, I don't. Somebody had told me that their friend went to see it and they thought it was super boring and pretentious. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I would disagree. It's <laughs> definitely not boring, and the movie's short enough that it's. It doesn't really uh, overstay its welcome. 
Is it, uh, and then a buddy of mine was to today or yesterday. He said he went to see it and he, he was super confused about what it was actually about and, and hadn't made up his mind whether he liked it or not. Does that, I won't disagree with that, but, uh, I did like it confusing or not. Okay. So then you, you recommend me to go watch it in the, in the theater then, right? Oh yeah. You, you for sure would love it. Okay, cool. Uh, but the, the two the two real ones uh, I have are um, two comedy shows, one that I was excited for, and then one that I just kind of stumbled across. So the the first one that I was super excited for that I sat down and watched was uh, "Our Flag Means Death." Okay. On uh, HBO Max, from from Taika Waititi. If you're a big fan of of his work, of his films, of Flight of the Concords of what we do in the shadows, the TV show as well as the film. Uh, you really like it. It's, it's it takes the true story of a pirate who was known as the gentleman pirate. Cause he was kind of, he was an aristocrat. Okay. And then decided to become a pirate. Uh, spoiler alert in real life. It does not work out well, <laughs> but uh, the, the, the show obviously takes a bunch of liberties and he has he commands this motley crew. Uh, each each of the crew has their own personality. They're fucking hilarious. Taika Waititi shows up. He plays Blackbeard, but he's like kind of a douche. And it's it's really funny. And Reese Darby is the uh, is the guy who plays the the gentleman pirate, the main character. And you you know him from from. Uh, Flight of the Concords, he's Murray. He was their their manager. So check that show out. I had a blast with it. It's it's definitely that that type of humor from all those those uh, Taika Waititi shows and films. And the second one that I just kind of stumbled across, which I couldn't believe, I it wasn't it wasn't on my radar before this was a show on Hulu called Champagne Ill. With uh, with my man Sam Richardson and Adam Powley, where they they're two guys that are like part of the entourage of this famous rapper who dies early on in the show in a freak accident, and then these two guys are like trying to figure out like what to do with their lives afterwards. It's really fucking funny. Uh, it's only it's only ten episodes, only one season, which I think was the plan because it really wraps up nicely. So I don't think that there was any any plan to have a second season or go beyond that that initial season. But it's really funny. And again, like shout out to Sam Richardson. This is your your regular reminder to watch Detroiters if you haven't seen Detroiters. With him and Tim Robinson because it's fucking hilarious, and it's one of my all-time favorite shows. And that's all I got. Nice man, I have to check all of that out. This... Yeah, our flag, our flag means death is on HBO Max, and Champagne Ill is on uh, is on uh, Hulu. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just had one, and I just uh, I wanted to recommend a, a Ray Liotta film that we actually did not talk about in this in, oh. the, in the news um portion is it no escape no identity <laughs> oh identity yeah mango that's a good movie it is it is it's crazy kind of whodunit um and it's uh it's on netflix so it's readily available for pretty much everyone check it out it's got a great ensemble cast yeah great piece of work I, I agree. I think it's I think it's one of Mangold's best. That that kind of gets he he had like Copland, and then kind of a lot of his movies before maybe Walk the Line are kind of forgotten about. Yeah, it's almost like they're he's not associated with them for some reason. Yeah, like he he does Walk the Line, and then people don't really pay attention until he hooks up with with Hugh Jackman again because when he did when he did the Wolverine that was like the second time he had worked with Jackman 
But it's, it's he, he has done like a handful of movies that I don't think anyone knows.